Good afternoon, everybody. So today I'm going to show you how to input a basic loan application in uh, LendingPad. All right, so let's get started. You're going to first log into Lending, your logging, um, LendingPad. However, for training purposes, we're going to use this uh, login information. Once this video is on the module, you will have the full login will actually be this email address and the uh, current password. All right, welcome to LendingPad. Um, if you're not familiar with it, once we're done with the uh, training session, feel free to browse around, learn more about it. There will be other videos uh, eventually in regards to LendingPad, browsing to different uh, parts of the, the system. I also encourage you to go to LendingPad directly into the uh, support tab, and they have a bunch of videos. Um, uh, excuse me, not support tab. It's a training tab. A bunch of videos to learn more about uh, LendingPad. They're actually recorded webinars. One of them is uh, origination in LendingPad. That is definitely a recommendation to review once you have an, an opportunity to do so. But right now, we are going to input a loan application. <clears throat> All right. All right, you're gonna first go to pipeline create go you always want to start out with loan on um, really not a much of a difference between lead and loan it's just your saving steps and you will understand why i'm going to have you start with loan create new loan okay borrower number one we're going to use this as a uh, test case in this case, I already have one, and it's going to be the same bar that I've been using. I'm inputting my bar's information, Marisol L test case. And it's going to be very important that you follow that when you're inputting for test cases um, so that when it pulls credit, it's going to pull a dummy credit report. If you're going to be using this as a uh, training session to refresh yourself, how to input a loan application to make sure that you put in the information from the application directly. The email address will be the borrower's email address. Telephone number, whatever that um, number that the borrower gives you. Subject property. This is what we do at the beginning when, I when you select lead or loan. You want to select loan. And when you get to street, you want to type in one, two, three, four, to be determined. And I'm going to use Big Bear Lake. Potentially property that they want to purchase. And don't even mention, or don't even bother validating the address because it's not going to pick up one, two, three, four, to be determined. We don't have a co-borrower. Terms, we really don't have all the information, but we're just gonna put basic just to get us started. Are they purchasing? Yeah. Conventional? Yeah. Um, we don't know the AUS type that is running in the automated system, which helps us loan officer guide us what documentation that the borrower um, is required to have when we submit the loan, the loan into processing, which will be explained later. Uh, the moving to Big Bear, um, we're going to use 500,000. Purchase price, now appraisal value and purchase price. For your sake of argument, you'll want to keep them both the same. 
the only person that's going to change a bit of appraisal value is the underwriter once they receive the appraisal in hand. But for us, we want to make sure they're about, about the same. My borrower wants to put 25% down, calculate the loan amount when it's 375. We don't know what their credit score is until we actually pull credit. And I will show you in just a little bit. Program, you know, since we don't have all the information for right now, I'm going to default it as conventional 30 year fixed. This is stuff that you can change later as you can modify. Interest rate, you know, we can estimate. I'm just going to put 7%. Just to have a number in there. If you're reviewing this video six months six months from now, excuse me, the rates could be higher or the rates might be lower. Just know that this is for training purposes. All right, so I got everything in there. I am going to click save changes. <clears throat> okay. Now I'm in my basic area of the screen. If you look on your left side of the screen, you should be in overview. Borrowers, we're going to click. First thing we're going to do, we're going to click edit borrowers. We got the first name, middle name in there. I'm going to plug in their social security. Again, this is a uh, basic training social security number that we have to use for training purposes. Uh, let's see. Mobile phone number. <clears throat> so just basic information. And now I'm going to click Save Changes. Awesome. So next thing I'm going to do, I am going to edit the terms and mortgage. I don't know what AUS type I'm going to do. I'm going to leave that blank. We do know with purchase, primary property, appraisal value, purchase price the same. This is going to be the loan amount. Um, we don't know the credit score yet, but we know it might be conventional and we have an idea on the note rate. We have estimated subject property. Um, what's really important down here, your next step, proposed housing experience. First mortgage, this is going off of what we put in, including the interest rate. Now, since we don't know what the buyer insurance is going to cost, and Big Bear's area with average is $125 a month, I'm just going to average it $125. The customer wants the offer to accept it, and as well as open, the client can go out and go shopping for fire insurance and forward you the uh, insurance estimate. And this is where you can actually update it. Property tax. We're going to use city property tax. Um, it might be state, but give me, no, it's going to be state. My computer is a little slow. All right, what we want to do is purchase price percent average. One and a quarter, save changes. And it's $520.83 a month based on um, the purchase price. Some areas, if you have knowledge of the property tax rate higher, you definitely can go back and update it. All right. So mortgage total is right here without HOA. So property tax, fire insurance, and p and is and going to be the three important things to use when you're trying to pre-approve a client. Any changes?
All right, so your next step will be wholesale lender information. Lending pad has some kind of glitch in the system as far as who we're going to use for wholesale lender because FHA requires this field to be filled in in order to run AUS properly. So for the sake of uh, training and going forward, when you reach wholesale lender, just automatically use UWM and use one, two, three, four as far as loan number. This does not do anything when you submit the loan to processing. This is more of a default. Now, when you plug in that information, for the sake of this training module, um, we're going to ignore this, and I will explain in a different module why we're doing that. What we want to do, our main purpose, is to try to get the borrower pre-approved within the system. Got we're done with the overview. Check loan application, personal information. All right, personal information. Click edit. Okay, your borrower's information. <clears throat> this appears correct. You're double checking like twice or three times already. Address it. All right. So when you do a loan application, generally the lenders like to see at least two years total of where they live. For the sake of argument, we're going to say that Marisol, the applicant, have lived here for two years, at the very least. Again, for training purposes, it's making us use Missouri. So we have to put that down there. We're going to be calling a dummy credit report. All right. Well, she lived there for two years. Now you might have a client that lived in one place for one year and another place for six months, you have to put that in there. And then um, we would have to go back to the client and say, okay, we need to fill in the other six months and add up to two years. Employment. Ideally, employers want to see two years of employment. Ideally, not necessarily just for one employer. For the sake of training, we're going to say, does she work for uh, this employer for five years? All right, what's really important when you're putting the employer's information, the phone number, you wanna put the main phone, phone number on there, the main company's phone number. So that way, uh, when it comes to employment and verification, they're contacting the employer HR department directly. Save changes. Income. All right, income, assuming that you're looking at their documentation, basic income, we're going to say that she makes 
$15,000 a month. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> banking. We are going to add a checking account. Basically, the stop. You don't necessarily have to plug in every single detail. You just want the basic information. We got fifty thousand dollars here. We're going to add savings. <clears throat> And we're going to add the 401k, which we will label it as retirement. Now, of course, I'm going to get ahead of myself. Let's just say she has $100,000 in there. Um, with 401ks and retirement, you can only use 60% of it as uh, reserves. And um, that's what underwriters are going to do. So we're going to do 60 I don't think it's going to let me, what I normally do, I go, usually when I get to that, in the bank name, I always put $100,000 times 60% of balance and cash value, I'll put $60,000 so they can see exactly what I did in calculation. They should know. Sometimes they get so many files, it flies through the head, but they should know. And that's the general two answers. All right. Any changes? <clears throat> when you get the liability, but right now we're going to skip it, I am going to show you where you can pull credit in just a minute. So in your next step, REO, She's renting a property. She doesn't own any property. So there's nothing to put in as far as like maybe she owns a rental property. She doesn't. But we can skip that. Loan and property information. This is just basic information on the property that she's buying, but we don't know. There's no offer. There's no signed offer between a buyer and seller. So we can't put that in there. But we can give an idea of where. And the city and state can be super important because every county has a different um, uh, loan limit. And so you want to be wherever they're going. They don't know the city, but they know the county. Just put, plug in the city within that county. So that way you have a better uh, idea of what the pre-approval is going to look like. Declaration. This is going to be important. These are questions. Um that the borrower has answered. And we already know that he or she is going to be living in a property primary, click yes. And then we answer a bunch of, this is actually defaulted. We know that this is a wealthy buyer, there's no bankruptcy, no foreclosure, but good there. Demographics is gonna be super important. Now, assuming that I met the borrower, assuming that I asked the borrower a question and the borrower answered a question for me. The first three things, oh, here we go. Okay, race, gender, female. Okay, let's say you don't know what to put. The borrower won't tell you or whatever the situation is. When it comes to clothing, the underwriter is gonna ask you to update them. They're gonna want further information. So you wanna be accurate as possible uh, in their um, gender, race, and so forth. This section here is for application taken in person, which most of the time we don't take it in person, most of the time it's over the phone or online. So we can skip this if you didn't do it in person. Um, and the best thing to do with demographics, information provided by, if you didn't do it in person, 
the best thing to do is do internet or email. It's, it's the most simplest, streamlined way to do it. And uh, application sign date, I, I would not even put that on there. This right here is a centralized system for lending pad where it becomes serious trid and all the regulation once you submit the loan to processing the processor uploads it to the lender that you want it to go to that's where everything becomes super serious as far as the dates trid income value and things like that all right so now we're going to save change them. Okay. So I told you we're going to skip liabilities. Now we're going to go back to liability. The next step after the application is generally inputted. You have an idea what the borrower is all about. Um, you want to click actions. You want to hit send credit report. Now, the initial send, it gives you the impression that it's sending it right now. That's not the case. It's just how they label it. So if you click send, a box will pop open. It's going to ask you what you want to do. Since this is a test case and a dummy credit report, we know Advantage Credit is the company that we're going to use. You want to use uh, My Credentials. It's going to use your information that's in your profile. So make sure you use my credential that's already saved in the system. Assuming okay, so it's going to be a fresh record. Ordering Newport. The credit card information is you plug in. If your borrower is going to be paying for it, then you plug it in. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I need to add. Now, if you already pulled credit, there is a file number. You would select reissue existing report and puts a file identifier number in here. In other words, it'll upload, reach upload to um, Advantage Credit, reach that last credit repoll and pulls it into lending pad. It's not repolling credit and charging your borrower again or um, creating an, another hard pull. So we're doing a new credit report. We're going to order a new report. All right, I'm going to click send request. Provided that I have everything in correctly. Still loading. Success. So I want to view it. I'm going to go to here. Okay, good report. Beautiful credit scores. Awesome. You're going to scroll down, take a quick look at this credit report. They got some accounts. Any anything that's open that's on here, it's already been pulled by lending pad, and I will show you where to find it. So after you look at this credit report, um, figure out if there's any lace or anything like that. Everything looks pretty good. There is a separate training on credit report, so you might want to look at that module as well. So um, click close the credit report. And let's go back to the loan application. Go to liabilities. And it pulled over her liabilities right here. 
in injury you don't want to worry about right now. So it looks like she has two liabilities. This appears to be maybe a card payment and a credit card. So that's in there. I am going to go back to overview. Credit score, lending pad, pulled it from the credit report. 743, the best of credit. And the debt to income ratio. Information right here. So taking into account total expenses with the house, other payment, which is on the credit report, income, and it's come up with the um, the DTI right here. The biggest thing you want to pay attention to is the second part of the DTI, which is almost uh, 25%. Um, this has to do with housing. Most cases, you're not going to you're, you're not going to care about that unless this loan got some serious issues and you're trying to fit them the product and the loan company may have certain restrictions on when it comes to housing. So once everything plugged in, everything looks good, you'll want to go back to actions. I'm going to show you something, but it's going to not work on here, but at least at least you know where to go. You want to send a US. Okay. For the purpose of training, you want to go to Fannie Mae, and you want to start with conventional, it's Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. They're two different systems. In regards to government loans, for example, on an FHA, if you're doing an FHA loan, it's going to give you a choice of Fannie or Freddie. FHA will uh, utilize their system, or I'm going to take a step back. FHA used to utilize Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac's system to get their uh, FHA reading. They made a rule change that you can no longer, lo no longer run Freddie Mac to get FHA uh, system approval. So FHA, think of Fannie Mae. Conventional, think of Fannie Mae. If for some reason you need to use Freddie Mac for conventional, maybe the program might be better, the guidelines, whatever, then you just you can kind of go back to it. Now, if you're doing conventional, I would definitely encourage you to run both. You have to run one at a time. Both of them will give two different readings. Maybe one of them will be better as far as documentation, um, as far as the loan in general. Purpose of training, we're going to do Fannie Mae. Initially, preliminary findings, you leave the case ID empty. Again, uh, use my credentials, click uh, send request. Again, it's loading out. Okay, success. View. You want to do the PDF version. HTML goes to the website, but the PDF is something that you can download, look at it better. Now look at this error. Danny Mae and Freddie Mac is recognizing that this is a training system. It's saying that, hey, in, uh, invalid credit, invalid uh, FICO score. In other words, it sees that that is made up. But when you run the um, AUS, this is what it's going to look like. Right now, it's showing two pages. Uh, this is a typical first page. This is a typical last page, which summarizes everything. There is usually 10 pages in between these two. And it's going to have employment information. It's going to have asset information. It's going to pick up anything, red flag maybe, or no red flag. It might spit back and give you the most easiest loan ever, or it might give you a hard time. Um, it's going to tell you, hey, you need two months of pay stub, three months of bank statement, or vice versa. Assuming that you got an approved eligible, this all looks good. Um, provided that you go back to your client and talk to your client about the pre-approval letter, do last-minute tweaks and changes, 
And when you do that, you can you have to rerun the AUS. You can rerun the AUS as many as times you like. Uh, there's no monitoring on those because keep in mind, this is our centralized system for the brokerage level. Once you submit the loan into processing and you instruct your uh, processor where to submit it, that's when the clock kicks in. Hey, you know, you have three days to submit the disclosures and so forth. This helps us guide to what loan product, um, where to put the, cl the client. Is this going to be conventional, FHA, and so forth? Um, as far as a loan application input, you doing it yourself, this is the end of this uh, video. Thank you very much for watching.